Good morning, everyone. You are listening to or watching Mizzy Bender on the Mizzy Bender Show or Mornings with Mizzy, depending on what platform you're on. Um, it is Tuesday morning, and we are going to get started recapping the weekend and all sorts of great fun stuff. So I'm going to give a minute for everybody to join. And uh, if you're on TikTok right now, you're now watching my boutique page. Mizzy Bender got shut down because I was not allowed to use a gardening hoe, I guess. It was... It was flagged as using a violent weapon, so they shut down my account. I am working on Mizzy 2.0, but it's not really coming together well. But So if you're on Facebook and you are supporting the cause on Mizzy Bender, go over to Mizzy's Boutique and send me the love and do the same exact thing that we would do uh, you know, throughout all the other morning shows. Good morning, Ryan. How are you this morning? I hope that you're having a great start to the week. Okay. So what's been happening? Let's see, last week I had a topic that I really wanted to talk about, but uh, I had to put it on pause for a second. So we're gonna regroup with that and kind of get things going. But today's topic uh, in actuality is all about sexting. And I put up a poll in the private group as well as some uh, Twitter kind of conversation and stuff like that. So if you have any thoughts about sexting, whether you like it, you don't like it, you love it, uh, any questions about it, start dropping it in there and I'll be sure to go back and either answer your question or, you know, see if I can bring it into another show in the future. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Steph. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, okay, so let's see. Oh my gosh, yeah. So our travel last week was a bit bonkers. It's really been a maddening couple of weeks and we're going into the busiest season for Mindbender Parties and Mizzy's Boutique. So I'm really curious to see how this is gonna go. Uh, as you might have listened last week, we spent all Memorial Day weekend working on the backyard, building our cabana, building our outdoor patio, just building all sorts of shit to get ready for Mizzy's birthday bash. Um, and I have to say, it's really coming out so beautifully. It's like the most welcoming space we could ever imagine. But not only that, so I mean, we worked hardcore the, over, the, over the entire weekend. Um, you know, and Memorial Day was the day off. And then we had to do this mad dash to Pennsylvania to go see my mom. For those of you that have been following, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe a month or two ago, I did an episode on no means no. That means I don't give a flying fuck what scenario in you're in. You have no right for anybody to enter your personal boundaries. And my mother happened to be extremely violated yeah, in her own home, as a matter of fact. It started out as a gentleman just coming, uh, you know, wanting to do her landscaping. No, I'm lying. It started out as he was coming to change her light bulb. She changed her light bulb, then it turned into he wanted to take care of her landscaping outside, not her personal landscaping. However, then it advanced into taking care of her personal landscaping uh, and the amount of vulgar messages he was sending her. It turns out that one weekend when it was snowing outside, he found her house key underneath her doormat and thought that that was the opening for him to, you know, go into her house. So one night while she was sleeping, uh, it was relatively early in the morning, this gentleman took her key and entered her house and was banging on her bedroom door like a psychopath, wanting to let her in. Uh, and this kind of evolved into a lot of different conversations between my siblings and I, which ultimately, I was like, if nobody here is fucking calling the police, I am, because this is a complete violation of personal boundaries, personal space, and uh, this is unacceptable. You know, she's scared to live in her own home. So with that being said, I had told her that we would be there for the start of the court case because nobody should go through something like that. Fast forward, she did press charges. Well, actually rather, she just went to, um, she wasn't going to press charges. She was just going to make a statement that these things were happening. God forbid something terrible did happen. Uh, after the police heard her story, they felt like it was quite a bit for them to press charges against him themselves. So they ended up pressing three, there was three different offenses against him, one of which is a high felony. So, you know, we had to go to PA. Now my mom lives like five hours away and that's a fucking crazy ass drive. And we did it in less than 24 hours. Now we usually do event trips rather frequently, but that was, that was a dangerous one. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. But point of the story is, is we did get there and we were able to support her through this court case. And I swear it was living like SVU, right? It was exactly like that. I 
you went into the courtroom, you're sitting with the victim's advocate, you have the DA, you have the state trooper, you're, they're all sharing all this information, and legit, it was going through all the different things like Olivia Benson would say, and it was just for a minute, it was very surreal, and it was very just, it was, it was weird, right? Because here my mother is, she's sitting there trying to, you know, state her case, and is almost, def like, almost was defending why she called the police and I was like you better fucking stop that right now because there's no defense there's no you know you didn't do anything wrong and that's what the victim's advocate said you know every victim really feels like they've done something wrong or you know he went through a lot of these different emotional feelings and the one thing I did want to revisit it on was I have a pretty hardcore point of view when it comes down to reporting things such as this and I do firmly believe that you should report it I think that my point of view might have been a little bit too harsh in the sense of maybe not giving the victims enough time to process appropriately. Maybe, you know, after having the conversation with him and, you know, listening to how he's had to manage some of the cases and things like that, I was like, you know what, maybe I should just go on and revisit because I feel like my tonality could have come across a bit aggressive. Um, and I still wholeheartedly feel that way. I still think that you should report immediately. But I also understand the fact that you might need a year, two, three years to process through, you know, some of those emotional feelings. Not that I can, I can relate to this situation in a certain degree. And like I said, it's the one thing I won't really discuss. But bringing it up to a different kind of thing and some of the other emotional situations that I've incurred in my life, I can understand. So it made it kind of resonate a little bit differently so I wanted to be sure that I went back and kind of had the conversation and, and brought it back up again because it's super important but I do think that everybody should report so it turns out that this guy is gonna have to go to court for like the rest of his life and uh, maybe we have to go back in October to see how things are progressing but there's a lot of different things going on in the case which makes it you know a very intense situation but I'm really happy to be involved and uh, to be able to provide, provide this information to you. I've actually been thinking about asking the victim's advocate to come on the podcast because I thought that that would be a really great um, educational piece for the community, just to learn and hear it from a point of view. So if you are suffering um, or have some questions, maybe there might be an outlet. So, you know, food for thought, I don't know. So good morning to everybody that is joining the show. Let's see, we have Paul, I said good morning to you already, June Bug. For all of those that are following the ASN award nominations, Junebug is in for Best DJ from the Paradise Club, which is in for Best Club, and Mizzy's Boutique is in for Best Retail Outlet. So go to ASNAwards.com and vote for all of us. It's two times a day for the entire month through June 30th. We're all in top five, so we're all running for number one spot, which means if we win, we will be the number one global uh, you know, whatever that category is for each one of us. And so we'll see how it all goes. And thank you for everybody for your support thus far. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Ryan. So Ryan says sexting is okay. It's a good turn on foreplay for the people whom I play. I don't feel it as, it, I don't feel it as much as I need both hands to type. <laughs> That's funny. So yes, just a reminder, we're going to be talking about sexting uh, in just a few minutes. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Sin. Oh my God. Mike, there's so many of you. Good morning. Uh, so Steph says, yeah, good for her. And you guys rock for being there. Yeah, you know what? I'm really happy that we were there too because this man, now remember he was 79 years old, but this motherfucker showed up with a posse, you know, of elderly folk from the community. The whole waiting room was full. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what a crazy tactic for somebody to pull. I just, I was kind of shocked by it truthfully, but whatever so um yeah so that's kind of what happened last week and it's been making for a very crazy uh time period right because we did that crazy mad dash uh you know we had the rest of the week to kind of settle in and then this past weekend was spencer's daughter's 18th birthday so we celebrated that which was a remarkable you know milestone for him and there's a lot of changes and stuff like that going on uh which was really wonderful but because of that we had invited his family over for you know like a barbecue or just like birthday dinner at our house on Sunday which means we had to go hardcore with the final pieces that needed to be complete for the backyard and uh, it's progressed so much since I've even like posted pictures of it uh, since the other day so now from now until Mizzy's birthday bash we have small little 
cosmetic type things that we need to do in the backyard but the oasis is set up for your pleasures and i'm so excited to welcome everybody into our home for you to experience it because it makes me so happy i'm sure it's going to do just the same for you this is great um okay so the last announcement is naughty and neon this weekend i'm so freaking excited i cannot wait to get back on the road you know, with all this crazy stuff that we've doing at the house, I feel like all we've been doing is working and now it's kind of time to go play. Even though it is work for us, it's still play and I just cannot wait to be back with just everybody, to see everybody. And with the sunshine coming out, everybody's spirits are so much more like jolly and our SDC invi um, invite list is, you know, growing out the yin yang. So if anybody's on SDC, make sure you go and RSVP for Mind Bender parties on there because you get put into uh, the private uh, IM group and there's activity in there. You know, there's pictures that flow and they're uncensored. You know, you can do anything that you want in there. Um, you know, and there's like some touch points, people checking in, this, that, and the other thing. So if you wanted to do that or if you need the link, ask me, send me an IM or an email to mizzybender at outlook.com and I'll be sure to send you over a three month free thing so you can kind of check things out and uh, see if you like the site or not. But I do like that because it kind of gives those a little bit more intimate connection before the event is here, uh, which is fucking fantastic. I just, like I said, I just, I cannot wait to get back on the road. We get to go on the ferry. We get to drive. We just get to be like out in nature. Then we get to dance. I mean, which is great. I just, I'm so fucking excited. I just so need this. Um, but then after that, it's going into a real crazy time period, if I say so, because we traveled this weekend. And then the weekend after is Saturday is Spencer's daughter's graduation party. And then it's Father's Day, which we're hosting. And then the weekend after is her actual graduation. So there's like graduation stuff going on all weekend long. Then it's like 4th of July. Then we travel to the Paradise Club with Mizzy's Boutique uh, for their luau, which is on July 9th, for their all-day activities, uh, which we have a play date weekend scheduled as well. And Holly and Jim are coming for the weekend, actually for the entire week leading into Mizzy's birthday bash, which is that, that next weekend, July 15th through 17th. And not going to announce it yet, but we're potentially working on something else uh, for the weekend of July 25th, which is nuts. And then we go into August and we go right back to Rhode Island. So as you can see, starting this weekend, we're literally going to be losing our fucking minds and there's going to be all sorts of exciting stuff to happen. So these are the time periods that you really want to watch the show. You really want to tune into the podcast because you don't want to miss a thing. This is when it gets good. And Matthew says he's so ready to glow his ass off. And I would have to say that. Uh, so here's Spencer. He's saying goodbye. You know, he's going to get his day started. Oh, they can't see you on Facebook, though. There he is. Look at that handsome face. Oh, okay, Bubby. I'll see you later. Had always, the best day. I love you, too. Okay. So, um, yeah. Fucking crazy. I can't wait. Exactly. We're going to glow. We're going to dance. We're going to drink. We're going to be married. And we're going to have a grand old fucking time. Okay. Grand now. Grand old fucking no pun intended. Matt is saying goodbye to you. Late. Later. Good morning, Wendy. How are you, Mama? So sexting. Let's talk about this for a minute. So I want to make sure you guys understand where this topic came up for, for, for me. So I've talked about a few times about the one play day that I had with my own personal self. Um, mm. Spencer tasked me with the, I don't know what it was. I, I yeah, think... Yes, he jerked myself off all day. That's what he, sometimes he does this to me. But you know, like in these really crazy time periods that we go through hardcore work at home, I mean, everybody can relate, right? Your lives get super busy. Uh, you're not on your normal schedule. Things get a little bit crazy. And so you're maybe not into your sexy rhythm as much as you would like to. Maybe it's a little bit quickie here and a little bit quickie there, but it's never like you, you don't have that time allocated for like that really down and dirty thing, which I talk about a lot that Spencer and I both really enjoy. So with these crazy weekends and all these builds that we have going on, on top of being exhausted uh, at the end of the night, it's just, it's just impossible um, you know, to want to even exert any kind of energy into that, truthfully, by the time those nights are over. And if I were being very honest, I've probably fallen asleep way before uh, Spencer was too. And this is going to be TMI, but I was also PMSing in on my period, so it made me so much more tired. So I've, I miss a, a long 
I, I, I miss like gaps of days and stuff like that when that's going on. And so it's been exhausting. So like we finally had this one day and I said to him, I was like, listen, I'm like really, 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 really pent up. Um, yeah, I can use my vibrator, but it's not the same as certain other kinds of orgasms, right? One can imagine that to be true. And I always, you know, you know the differences. Women can have nippy orgasms, they can have anal orgasms, they can have JJ orgasms, and they're all very different. I mean, I'm sure there's all sorts of different ones that I haven't mentioned, but like for me specifically, um, you know, like anal and vagina, very different. They're very, very different. And truthfully, uh, I don't even feel like I fully have been pleased if I have, you know, if I go from the butt, right? I just, it's different. And so I still need, you know, the vagina penetration to feel like I've been super complete. So, you know, the vibrator just does not cut it most of the time. So with that being said, you know, we had one day where it was just like, listen, we are allocating this night to us and that is it. We didn't have, uh, we made sure we didn't have any plans, um, none of that. And in the morning, you know, Spencer kind of started the day like a little bit sexy with me. So like it was something that we talked about the day before and went into the next morning really trying to, uh, you know, make sure that we execute against this plan this evening. And so he's like, listen, I really want, oh, and he also had purchased like a, a few new toys and stuff too. So he was like, I want you to, <laughs> He is a fan of it feeling like there's nothing in there ever. So if it were up to him, by the time he would bang me, it would be like as loose as a goose, which is, you know, his preference. And so that's why he said, uh, you know, I want you to, I don't know. He was like, I want to be able to fist you by the time I get home or something like that. And I'm sorry. For those of you that really know and play this way, it takes some time to get to the point where it really feels that way. And number one, it takes a lot of time for the female uh, to, uh, to get like a little bit work. I mean, myself, if there's another female out there that's different for, you can totally say so, but I need to work that real good, right? So I start with a small toy, and then after like getting like super, you know, hot and heavy with myself, then I, I go up to the next size, and then, you know, a lot of times I kind of just like sit with it in there for a short while, so it kind of just like it just, there's all sorts of stuff that goes on. Also of which, all these different things that Spencer really enjoys. So I was like, okay, well if he's tasking me with this, then I'm just gonna fuck with him the entire day, because I know that I'm gonna be, you know, doing some activities that are gonna like really send him through the roof, and why not, you know, mess with him if he's tasked me with this? Well, then you're going to get the experience uh, throughout the entire day. And also of which, if I put them on my, my spicy page, I really try and show him first a lot of what, what I can because I just want him to see what I've done before, you know, the world has seen it. So this is how this day went. So legit, I think that I had a phone call. Um... I was ending at like three o'clock or something like that. So I was like, listen, so after my 3 p.m. call, I will for sure go on this project for you. Oh my God. The sex thing that went involved, that was involved that day was just like, oh, it drove me crazy. And not just myself crazy, but it drove him crazy, right? Because number one, He's never sure if I'm going to like execute some again against some of the things that he says to me. You know, he sometimes he throws out some really wild stuff, and I don't know if I'm in the mood for it or not. So I'm just like, all right, well, we'll see how this goes. You know, so it's always a surprise on whether or not I'm going to execute against his request. So once I sent him the first video, he was just like, "What are you doing to me? Like, I'm at work. This is what is happening." So yeah, the whole rest of the two hours, because it was a really long, really long personal intimate time. Uh, he was just like so by the time he had gotten home he was like ready to explode which made the night so much more enjoyable so i was like i got to i, I got to do a poll in the group about who likes sexting who doesn't you know what are the what are the pros what are the cons you know all these different things right so i'm really happy to say that 108 humans voted against this response and if you could imagine 52% of them said that they really, really enjoy it. Um, like 31 or 38% or something like that said that they only like it sometimes. And there were reasons why. And so we'll get into them. However, I'm going to put it on pause and I'm going to check my Facebook comments just to see where we're at. 
Oh, somebody sent me a little puppy heart. What is this? Oh, Mark, thank you so much. Good morning, Shelby. Four more fucking days to go for Naughty and Dion. I can't wait, girl. I am so overly pumped. It's not even funny. Um, okay, so John's asking me if squirting is a real thing. Yes, squirting is a real thing. Um, I happen to... I happen to be a squirter, but first and foremost, let's go through it, right? Yeah, hold on one second before I go through this. So, G Party 696 on my Mizzy's Boutique TikTok right now. Go and follow his account because he also recently got his shut down. Um, but, yeah, you have to. So, like, every Tuesday, for sure, there's always a poll or a topic within the private group. Uh, I have been adding a few more polls just because my mind's been going a little bit crazy, so I've kind of deterred from my Topic Tuesday thing. Um, but with the morning show going and the podcast revamped and all that kind of stuff, my wheels have really been just like whoosh. Uh, so I've, I've been adding a bit more. I should really pin it to the top so everybody knows to automatically just go look at the top for the engaging questions or whatever. Um, so what's it called? Back to it. Um, where was I? I got confused. Oh, squirting. That's right. I had to think for a second. So yeah, so, so, so with the squirting. So something that I feel like a lot of humans try and put um, like an accomplishment on. So for an example, I had to personally learn how to do it. I know like there have been times in the past where you hear how loud that is? I'm in my house, and that's like all the way out in the street. I feel like you could hear the fucking cars come through my home. So I know years and years and years ago, there was a potential point in time that maybe I did, but of course it's like one of those things where you're like, did I just pee? What is going on here? I don't know, and I don't know. So I never really thought about it further until like I got into the lifestyle, and I started to like really learn a little bit more about squirting and things like that. And it's something that Spencer's always tried to get me to do, um, because I guess he knows that it's possible, but for some reason I could never figure it out. But that was because I never really spent the time with my own personal body to figure out how it actually works. And ladies, I do believe we probably all can if we really allow our minds to release and not put so much pressure on our bodies. I find that I am able to, I mean, flow like crazy when I'm super you know, just whatever. There's no, there's no thought into it. There's no trying, there's none of that. Uh, and also, if like we've been banging for hours and I'm so overly intense within my body, I definitely, and then I always will. So I don't always, but when I know that you're trying to make me do it, I'm not going to because I feel like there's so much uh, focus on it. So like our single guy play partner, he would love it. Uh, and he would try so hard all the time to the point that I knew he was trying so hard that it became so not even, the moment came not even enjoyable anymore. Because I was like, dude, why are you fucking focusing so much on this? If it's supposed to happen, it will. You doing this is just fucking pissing me off because like I'm not, I'm not a toy. I mean, that's how I like to be treated in particular instances. But in that regard, like, no, just fucking stop. You can tell it's not going to happen. Oh, hey, lady, how are you? I see that everybody, I, I'm so upset that my freaking account, account got uh, shut down, but whatever. Um, we'll get into the raffle and how to help that, I'm sure. Oh, TikTokers, you can't see it. Um, let me move you for a second, I'll show you. See, I got this raffle going on here. We'll talk about it uh, sometime throughout the show. Okay, so, Sean says sexting gets the juices flowing. I fucking sure should believe that. Yep. Uh, so Steph says, I like it and love letting it to be known what I want and like. And that is a great way to let someone know. I also agree with that statement. Now, two things here. There's a few comments here. And we'll get into, I jotted down a few very specific examples from the actual group itself. And, um... Someone was saying, because somebody had said something similar about that stuff, and I, my response was, are these all fantasies that you're, you know, you're texting out, or are they real things that you want to do? And um, because the question struck because, you know, a lot of times when Spencer and I are physically having, you know, interactions and stuff like that, he's always like saying some stuff in my ear 
that ultimately I know that he really wants, but right now it's just a fantasy because we haven't gotten there, such as like a gangbang or something like that, right? He really wants to see, <laughs> he really wants to see me in that element. Uh, I also really want to experience that. I just haven't, ha I just haven't found the bucket of humans that I would really want to be involved with it. Just when I think that I have them all, I don't, and so I have to start all over again, um, you know. So Matthew's saying, my first experience with a squirter, she didn't warn me, and when she did, I legit thought she pissed all over me, lol. So if you do, or you can, warn your partner if you haven't. Uh, I'm so glad that you said that, because I also agree with that as well. I don't think that anybody should just spring that on anybody. So I'm going to be really honest with you. Uh, you know, of course, I love the ladies, and I have no problem about, uh, you know, getting in there and, and making things happen, but I don't want that on me. I have a huge issue with fucking water. I don't like water at all, right? I don't like to be wet. I don't like, there's just, I just don't like it. So if a chica were to just spring that on me, I'd probably really be pissed in the moment, and it would ruin a lot. So yeah, I do agree that you should really say, like, like I share that with others. There are also other times where I could feel within my body super pent up, which I know means it probably in that sexual encounter I will release. And if, this is gonna sound bad, if my partner does not make it happen, I'll use my vibrator and I'll make myself do it because then I feel like I haven't like officially really orgasmed as, as I need to and I feel even more pent up than I was before I started. So there are some times where I actually have to uh, do that or I don't feel like complete for the day and I just feel really, really just like, oh, this didn't go well type of deal. But I, yeah, I always warn, always. And that's why I encourage the ladies to explore your bodies personally on your own because you really, listen, anybody, all of us can really become in tune with ourselves if we pay attention so very much. It's some of the things I talk about, um, you know, with anal, how, you know, about, you know, some, some like to, you know, take like things to cleanse yourself out and do all these different things. I won't, I don't do things like that simply because I don't really like putting so much stuff in my body in that nature, unless it's marijuana. Chances are I'm not going to try and use it to fix myself. And so, you know, in those aspects, I really just try and figure out how my body feels, like all these different things. And maybe because I have so many womenly issues, I'm very in tune to my body because I can always feel or figure out when there's something happening or I can tell what the symptoms are of what my side effects are going to be from whatever's going on. Uh, so I've learned to really pay attention to the ins and outs of it. But from a spirituality standpoint and meditation standpoint, I know it's probably going a little bit far, but if you really put it into your zone and your Zen spot, uh, you really more than likely can really figure out how to capture all of these orgasmic moments and really put yourself into heightened levels. Um, okay, so top of the morning to, yeah, exactly. Uh, I did not see that comment earlier, Lynn, I'm so sorry. So let's catch what's happening here course it did my tiktok got suspended of course it did <laughs> like the amazon river i'm so tired of tiktok whatever so back to like the amazon river that's kind of funny um yeah i like sometimes it's it's aggressive and sometimes it's just a little bit sometimes it feels like it's a ton and then sometimes like there's you know none at all so it's it's weird so these are some of the things that the community have submitted, and I thought that they were really great point of views. The first one was, if you're going to engage in sexting, can you actually sext? Now, I am at fault for this. I don't necessarily know how to come up with some like really savvy, sexy things on the fly. Spencer, on the other hand, is like, oh my god, he can come up with some stuff that I just, I read it, and I'm just like, oh boy, okay, I see where we're at here. And so with that... I kind of get a little bit like nervous. Am I sending back something that's like the right way? Am I sending something back that he would really love? So I really just try and stay in the moment and think about, you know, like the Pepe and what all these different things are and, and really provide, you know, a good response. However, I do agree sometimes life gets in the way. And how in the world can you potentially and possibly carry on these different things? Example the day that I was home by myself and Spencer was at work. 
Now, at that moment in time, I'm so much more available to, uh, you know, send some crazy, nasty messages. So with him, you know, I was waiting like an hour or like 30 minutes or something for him to respond uh, to something that I said. Now, under normal circumstances, I guess that would be okay. Um, but I feel like it would be, in that moment, it would be distracting for me. Had I not been in that personal moment, you know, enjoying my own self for the day, and I'm waiting all these buckets of time for this message to come back, those are the times I kind of am just like, well, you know, this isn't as fun because I could be horny as fuck right now and legit, you know, 25 minutes can go by and something can happen and you're just not that way anymore. And so you're like, oh God, here we are. Now I got to follow through with this. So I thought that that was a really great call out for somebody uh, to say that, you know, life gets in the way and they can't actually carry on conversations. And it's true. And it's not that you're trying to be disrespectful or not engaging or anything of the sorts. It's just, you know, the fucking kids are crying or somebody's hungry or the diaper needs to be changed or, you know what, work phone call, I gotta go. So it is really challenging, which brings me to when are the times that are the best times for this? I personally feel I love sexting with potential play partners. Um, we had one and we didn't actually end up following through with playing with him. Um, things got real messed up with timing and he lives real far away. So the one time that we did see him, it was like I was kind of just like feeling out the situation, you know, on whether or not I felt the energy to want to proceed in this play kind of element. Uh, we had just returned from, we were going to him after a very long leg of a trip to begin with. And so we had an, when, by the time we had gotten to him, it was going to be like another 10 hours home. And so with that, by the time we had gotten to, and we were only staying for like overnight. So by the time we had gotten to him, I was like exhausted and I couldn't even focus on being sexy. But I will say the sexting that went on, you know, prior to getting to him was amazing. Uh, I happen to really love when... I get to have the opportunity to see a man masturbate and, you know, go through all of the steps and get to that final completion. You know, of course, when I ask. More importantly, it makes me so much more turned on when I know it's because of myself. And, you know, that's your reaction. So it's just one of my kinks, one of my fetishes, whatever you want to classify it as. Uh, and he played really well with me like that. So when you have somebody that can really, you know, captivate you in that kind of way, it drives me wild. And more so with the play partners, because as uh, you know, it was mentioned earlier on, it gives you the insight to how one's brain operates. What are they thinking? How do they play? You know, what are some of the things that turn them on? You know, truthfully, um, now this isn't sexting, but it's like the verbal within you know, mind Spencer's physical play. Sometimes he says things that you know like i don't even know why that's the opportune time to do it but i guess because you're in the moment and you you're thinking all these different things of course but uh there are things that i've learned that he really enjoys um when you know we're in these moments and so for me i don't know if he's like dropping these things to like open my mind of like thinking about it or what for example like the come play uh he'd always there's a lot of different things that he really enjoys now, I wasn't really necessarily sure how much I loved it because everybody normally goes, you know, to the face. And I'm like, this is not what I'm looking for. And I don't want it on my face. However, there was one night after one of our events, a couple events ago, I don't know what was going on, but the sexual, sexual energy between Spencer and I was like impeccably off the charts, right? It was just something else. And we had like the really raunchiest, kinkiest kind of play session that night uh which really kind of advanced me into you know some other things but had he not spoken some of those words prior to that night I probably would have been a little bit shocked by some of the you know things that were happening now I love it and now I'm just like okay now I can't stop thinking about certain things and now it's become like a new fetish or kink or whatever the fuck it's called uh however you classify these things um, so I think that when you have the opportunity to be open-minded and not be fearful to say or write these words in whatever fashion you're doing it in, uh, it really can open up your mind to different sexual buckets and different uh, trials and different things. Now, 
This brings me to another point that a community member had said. Uh, she said that she's not really sure that she loves the texting so much, but she's all in on the Skype. Now, I'm on the complete opposite of things, and interestingly enough, I've been really thinking about exploring um, more of like a cam girl type of thing, simply because I love this. My issue becomes like I'm never never banging on something like this, right? That's a very personal thing. I, you know, I would do other things, um, but I wouldn't do that. And so I thought it was interesting for her to say that she'd much rather, you know, get up on a Skype and just do her sexy thing on the Skype. And it's so much better that way. And I've never done, I've never done that. I've never done like a video audio thing like that before. I wonder how many listeners actually have and how much you really love it well if you're listening um drop that down here too or if you're listening afterwards send me a message because that's going to be uh my next maybe i'll do a a whole other show yeah it's a great way to see how vanilla someone is or not as well i agree with that too because like i said sometimes spencer throws some shit at me and i'm just like whoa man i had no idea um okay she says that i will use my own fantasies or things I have done sometimes or I will find out what the person has for a fantasy and use that. Sometimes just go with it, using whatever comes into my mind. You know, I that's such a great thing and it kind of goes back to something. So I had the pleasure of chit-chatting with this wonderful woman, Dear Nikki. Now, Dear Nikki, she has just written her, her first book and it's all about community-submitted sexy stories in a private kind. I don't know if they're private or not. Um, I know that they are submitted to her. I don't know if they keep them confidential. I think some do and some don't just based upon what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter. But um, she also has another job that involves like a uh, phone. Um, I'm not entirely sure all of it. And she was giving me these points of views and some tips. And that's exactly what she said. She was like, you know, just in the beginning of the conversation, you find some little things that you like and then you run with it. She's like, everyone should know a little bit about everything. Know a little bit about, like if you're a female and you don't know these things, know a little bit about cars, know a little bit about cigars, know a little bit about this, know a little bit about some of these, you know, hotter items that the gentlemen like to try and, you know, associate yourself a little bit more and feel a little bit more relatable to the conversation at hand. And I said, oh my gosh, uh, that's like simply brilliant. I'm so happy about that. Um, so yeah, so that goes to like what you were just saying, Steph. I like that in point of view. Okay, hold on. Going back down to the comments. All right, so now we're moving on. So... The next point, and this is super critical, does it actually lead to sex afterwards? Now, I can understand that also. If one is going through all of these delicious, inviting, oh my God, and you read it, maybe you read it a few times, maybe you're like thoroughly feeling those words and you're repeating good girl over and over and over again in your brain and you're just feeling so revved up and so amped up that you can't wait uh, for, you know, your person has to come home and take you, and then they don't. There's nothing worse than that. That's worst. Sometimes uh, so I would get so upset with Spencer. <laughs> now, I can't fault him, right, because his job is super crazy, and the lumber in- industry has just been really bonkers for the past little while, so I can't fault him. But there have been days where... I'm like, oh my God, I'm like so ready to go, right? I put on something super cute and he says, I'm leaving work at 5.30, I'll be home at 6.30, whatever. And I'm like all waiting and stuff. Fucking like 7.30, a quarter to eight comes and this motherfucker's like walking through the door. And I was like, yeah, no. By the time like 45 minutes pass and you're not home, by the time you said you were home, I'm changed and I'm done for the night. And then I'm not even banging you at all because you totally fucking threw me for a loop when your time management was not great. So in circumstances like that, yes, If we're going through the entire day and we're having like these like really hot like exchanges and you tell me you're going to be home at this point and I'm like waiting and I can't wait and then you make me wait and wait. No, it's over. It's not even fun anymore. So I agree, you know, things really do have to come to fruition and play out because that would be just, it's just more, um, what is that called? It's not pent up, but you know, it just... It's not a fun feeling. 
coffee break. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My gosh. All right. So as I'm looking at my notes, I think that those are all of the talking topics that I have for this particular subject. Um, oh yeah, so Jeremy, my bestie, is saying if it isn't leading to play, I'm not interested. Free time is too precious. Yeah, I agree. So, um, I do agree that it is too precious, and it's I, not that it's too precious, but it's just like, I don't want to be led on. I almost feel like that's like a lead on, right? But then I changed my point of view, which is why I hesitated at a moment, because if it's with a potential play partner, uh, I'm, I'm okay with it, of course, like lasting throughout the time. What I'm not okay with is this, though. I'll share this. So, you know, if we, and this is no disrespect to the person at hand, because I, I really do love him to death, and he's just, it, I'm very conflicted. But, you know, so there is a gentleman that I really, really, really enjoy as a human, uh, sexually amazing. The thing is, it's very hard to engage with him from a communication standpoint. It's just his style, it's just who he is, and there's no fault to it at all. The problem is, is that does not work with my play style, right? So if I can't have this banter with you, if I can't feel your sexual vibes, if I can't uh, get anything from you in that kind of way, it's very difficult for me to proceed, right? Because I want to have that sexual connection with you. And from a play partner standpoint, I truthfully feel like the only way that you can uh, start to get those vibes if you do start those sexy kind of conversations. Now, mind you, uh, this is all with consent if you're going into these, you know, play partner conversations. Um, I always ask up front, you know, so even though we're in a group chat, that doesn't necessarily automatically mean that you can send, you know, some naughty stuff. You still have to ask permission. Yes, I understand we're in a group chat. Uh, would you love to see, or would you like to see, you know, a video, or can I send you this photo? If the answer is yes, well then, you know, you have consent to do whatever you want and you can proceed. But I'm not saying that the second that we start a conversation, I want you sending me, send me your Pepe, because that's not what I'm saying. But I do want you to be able to provide some of these things to me. And if you can't, well, then you're not my type of play partner. And I've definitely come to realize that over the last few months, you know, with some, with understanding what my boundaries are and my, not my boundaries really, what my wants and needs are from the lifestyle. And when I run into different play partners that I want to try and have a relationship with, if they don't meet these things, I do know that I need to kind of pull back some because it's not meeting that requirement or my thrill that I'm looking for from the lifestyle, right? Because then that, that's irrelevant on why I'm, I'm coming into the lifestyle. Um, okay, so let's see here, Mr. Party. So jumped on, <laughs> jump ship off TikTok, now on Facebook, need good vibes. Wife just went, oh shoot. Um, yeah, so I'm so glad that you're on with us. I am sending such great uh, vibes. You can send me a personal message after this is over if you need somebody to chit chat with, you know, through the time period. I'm, but all good karma and good energy. And yes, TikTok uh, <laughs> kicked me off of um, live for sexual nudity or some shit like that. So Steph says, it's a tease if it doesn't go all the way. I agree. I mean, it's, it is like a real tease. And some days I'm more sexually charged than other days. So some days I'm a little bit more offended than other days when it doesn't actually happen. But you know, like last night, this guy, I'll t let me tell you about this. These are how our days go. And I don't know if I'm the asshole or not, but um, you know, so I've, I've said it a few times, like one of my most favorite moments is when a gentleman was waking up in the morning. There's just something so beautiful about such a calm, relaxed body and just feeling so just like at peace, but then bam, you've just got this delicious hardness going on and I'm just like I just want all of it like this is my what goes through my brain in the morning and so I'm always like looking at Spencer like he's a piece of meat but he doesn't want to do anything sexually in the morning because it's just not his thing right so yesterday morning I don't, know, I don't know I went and I got coffee and I went just was getting my stuff ready and I come inside and he's kind of just like holding himself I'm like what's going on here or you know are we is some he's like well do you want it I said yes I do here I come <laughs> uh, and so you know, I, I took care of the deed and I did, you know, what my most yummy stuff. And since he's not, you know, an engaging human in the morning, I took care of my own self with him right there with me or whatever. Uh, you know, and then he went about his business. And I said to him, I said, can you please, you know, can we make sure that you bang me later? Because I really would love to kind of end this day like this. 
And so, like, that's where we were at, right? But then he comes home from work, and um, he's, like, watering the garden, which is great, right? And then he's like, do you want to walk to the ice cream shop? Yes, if I fucking want to walk to the ice cream shop. I've been wanting to go to the ice cream place for fucking weeks now. And that mofo will only take me to the supermarket because he can't stand to spend fucking $8 on an ice cream. And then he still busts my balls when I get like a fucking Ben and Jerry's that's $5 or some shit. Like, it's just fucking maddening, right? I don't spend money on jack shit. So like... These small things, and he busts my balls about fucking everything. That's just how he is, right? So I said, yes, I want to walk to the ice cream place. And if you remember, I've been really trying to get all of my rings on my thing on a daily. But it's been a little bit wonky because of all the backyard work. I haven't been wearing my watch because I don't want a silly tan. So I don't actually know where we're at. And we haven't been doing our nightly walks like we, have, that, like we were doing prior to all this backyard stuff. So for me, I'm like, this is a double check, right? I get to go on a walk. I get to go eat ice cream. I get to eat ice cream while I walk. What this fucking great, right? So we do that. And then he says, DJ G is supposed to be coming over at 7.30. Well, DJ G never is on time. DJ G's time management is on a different time level. Between him and Spencer drives me goddamn mad. And then you add Miss Lady into the key. I can't even fucking travel with any of them. I'm sitting like on the floor with my bags packed, like all ready to go while these monkeys are still trying to get themselves together uh, to get out the door. And the stress levels are going bananas on my side, right? So I'm like, okay, I, who knows if DJ G's even really showing up tonight. So, you know, we're going on our walk. DJG is supposed to be there at 7.30. We don't get home from our walk until like, I don't know, it was like a few minutes after 8. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, you know, but Spencer's like checking the cameras and he's like, nope, no DJG. He didn't come. We didn't miss him. But then like 8.30 comes. Um, and I forget what, like we were kind of just getting ourselves like un, un, like we were just getting ourselves settled back in from coming into the walk. Like immediately I come home, I take my clothes off. I don't wear clothes for often. So, you know, we go in the house, you go up, go out and immediately I come home and I get naked so this is like what I'm doing so Spencer's hollering into me saying that okay now DJG is on his he's going to be coming over now and so I think that we were planning on going in like the hot tub for a short while and so we did right so like maybe 15 minutes later DJG showed up we went in the hot tub we were shooting shit for a while it's like 10 30 and now like we're going into bed now I will tell you we it was I had a long day it was for some odd reason I woke up at like a quarter to five yesterday like I couldn't sleep which I think it's just because the sun is shining so much more and the birds are chirping a ton and whatever so I was up relatively early it was a busy day in the boutique yesterday I didn't finish packing my orders until maybe like one o'clock or so and then I still had all my other like work I needed to finish so by the time I was really kind of done it wasn't until like 4 30 5 o'clock you know, I had to do my house chores, and we went on the walk. And truthfully, when we go on a walk, I feel really relaxed when we get home. Um, probably because I just released all that, like, regular, you know, energy that was left kind of swirling through me. And then I also, you know, going in the hot tub uh, for an extended period of time uh, really makes me feel super relaxed. Especially, I make sure I go through all the different massaging uh, seats to get all of my body work just perfectly and I'll tell you what that hot tub does wonders I have a lot of stress that sits in my shoulders and sometimes it makes it feel like I can't even breathe or like I get this really sharp kind of like kink right here in my head like kind of close to the the, the base of my head of my you know like scalp into my um, what is this my spinal cord and it like pinches kind of and so like if I try and turn my head it's like I feel like everything is so I go into the hot tub and it just so when I come out you know I'm like he's dicking around for a while I go lay in bed I put on Shark Tank I've already watched you know like half of episode of Shark Tank or whatever you know almost towards the end of it and then you know I'm like almost falling asleep and he comes in there and he's like you know this is what was said this morning and he's like laying there and he's laying there and he's laying there as if I'm going to go and jump his bones. I was like, mofo, you told me this morning that you couldn't do anything. So I had to engage. I'm not doing anything. I'm tired. So if you want this to happen, you need to start making things happen. Well, that didn't happen. You know? Nope. So I can't be at fault. 
point of the story is, is like he talks about these things, but legit he wants to bang at like midnight. And I'm sorry, after a long day, like I'm not waiting up until midnight to bang. However, he doesn't want to bang at like 6 p.m. So we're in very different time conflicts when it comes down to our sexual schedules. Oh my God, the hot tub and their massage therapy is amazing. I would always say to Spencer, I need to, you know, I need to go and get a massage because I can take some real deep pressure. Like I want to feel like your fingers in my, like my rib cage. I could take some intensity. And he was always like, no, I promise you, go in the hot tub, this will do it. And when I go in there and I actually work all the different massagers a few times, honestly, I feel like a new person. And it does, it saves so much money because I don't know how much massages are by you, but they're about like 120 maybe for like a good deep tissue massage that's maybe 50 minutes. And honestly, I really love like a 90 minute massage because I really, you know, Listen, my brain goes a mile a minute, my stress levels, not that they're stressful, but it's like I keep a lot of stuff internalized. And so like for me, that's just like a really great release and it makes me feel so much more relaxed afterwards. This having the hot tub has saved so much money. It's incredible. Bestie says our new jacuzzi is one of my favorite things in the yard now, other than the sexy humans. Fuck yeah, because you could take the sexy humans into the hot tub and be even more sexy in the hot tub. Like it's just amazing. So yeah, I know this this conversation went in a lot of wild different directions today, but I'm not I'm not gonna hate it. So a new thing I was doing community submitted questions at the front in the beginning of the show. I'm now going to be doing them at the end of the show and doing some community member shout outs. So starting now, if you have something that you want me to shout out on the show, such as a business, uh, something that's coming up. Uh, you know, whatever it may be, send me a message and we can talk through it and it will be announced here, uh, you know, at this community segment. So this this one is from Alan. Alan sent me a message and he was, he's in Texas and he had somebody reach out to him asking about the Red Lux Lifestyle Club. Somebody had invited him into this club, but through his research, he has not heard of the club at all. And I have not either. But he feels like I'm a trusted resource and wanted to see if it, in fact, is, um, you know, a um, certified place to go. So if anybody has any information on that, please let me know. I would really love to pass it on to him. Again, it's in Texas. It's the Red Lux Lifestyle Club. If you have any information on that club or any feedback that you can provide to me, uh, send me a message or email me at mizzybender at outlook.com. Now, uh, one of my most favorite humans from the community, and he's been a follower for quite some time, and he's just so lovely. Uh, his name is Steve. He, he jumps on here every, every now and then. But um, he wanted me to mention that this weekend in Rhode Island, there's a free street fair going on. So if you're coming to the Mindbender Party's June 11th, naughty and neon event and you're traveling from you know near or far because we do have humans that come from all the tri-state area if you're coming to town a little bit earlier you can head into providence and there's a street festival going on from what i understand it is free uh you know you'll have all the festival food there are some vendors going on and things like that just don't get yourself too exhausted that you can't come to the event at 9 p.m um and so those are the two um the two announcements from the community for today and I just want to make sure that we all take a minute about the raffle so as you can see here I have this nifty little gift bag sitting here it is Lizzie's madness giveaway every month there's going to be a new raffle giveaway and an objective for you to do since social media has been fucking with me tremendously, I would really love for you to go to subscribe to mizzybender.com so you can still receive all the latest information from me. God forbid my social accounts get shut down because uh, Instagram is giving me some notice. I got a little bit of an issue yesterday that I've been trying to work out and so they're going a bit wonky. So go subscribe to mizzybender.com. When you do, your name gets put into this bucket here. And as you can see, we already got the submissions going. I will remind you until the end of the month, which the name will be called on June 30th on this live show. I will announce your first name. 
uh, and then reach out to you afterwards to say, hey, guess what? You've just run, you've just won the Mizzy Madness giveaway, which is valued at $50 or more um, from our sponsors, which would be something from Mizzy's Boutique, One Condoms, Naughty Indulgence, Spunk Lube, and SDC Media. I can't wait for you to join. And on there, I'm starting to use the mobile pushout. The mobile pushout is, it's an app, right? So if you download the app and you know participate with Mizzy Bender or through the app, you get like social posts. So I'll be, I'm going to start utilizing that so much more and, and, and stop focusing on posting on social because it's fucking annoying. Uh, so yes, yeah, so those are all the different things that I have. Be sure you follow along. And if you have anything that you want me to discuss, a topic, anything like that, Mizzy Bender, Dot com is your way to go if you want to because you can send me ims on there you can send me emails i mean if you really don't want to go that route send me a message or go mizzybender at outlook.com but migrating everything through the website would be just best um i don't know you guys so until thursday i guess i'll talk to you super soon it's been a pleasure chatting with you this morning until next time <laughs>